Hi and welcome to module 7.2. Now that we know more or less how to deal with stochastic signals, we are ready to look into the inner workings of a quantizer and try to describe the kind of distortion introduced by the quantizer itself. The way we will do that is by equating the distortion to a source of white noise and by analyzing the properties of this noise. Of course, we're analyzing a very simple type of quantization over a very simple class of signals. And quantizer can be designed to be much more complicated than that. But this is a very good starting point, and we will leave the design of more complex systems to your next signal processing class. Hi, and welcome to module 7.2 of Digital Signal Processing, in which we will talk about quantization. We will examine quantization in general terms, and then concentrate on uniform quantization and the associated error analysis, and then we will briefly talk about clipping, saturation, and compounding. Quantization is really the second half of the story in digital signal processing, the first half being the discretization of time. We soon realize that digital devices can only deal with integers no matter how many bits we use inside each memory cell. And so we need to map the numeric range that discrete time samples live on onto a finite set of values. In so doing, there is an irreversible loss of information because we're chopping these amplitudes according to the resolution that our system allows for. If we are to represent the situation graphically, we have a sequence of discrete time samples here that belong, say, to the set of complex numbers. These samples go through a quantizer, and a sequence of quantized samples come out where each quantized sample now belongs to the set of integers. We model the input as a stochastic process, and to study the effects of this system, we have to consider several factors. How many bits per sample this quantizer will allocate, what is the storage scheme used to represent the quantized samples, for instance, is it fixed point or floating point, and what are the properties of the input as a stochastic process, what is its range, and what is its probability distribution. The simplest quantizer is the scalar quantizer. In this quantizer, each sample is encoded individually, so we don't take into account relationship between neighboring samples, each sample is quantized independently, so there is no memory of previous quantization operations, and each sample is encoded using R bits. So the rate here is R bits per sample. Let's see what happens when we scalar quantize an input. Assume we know that each input sample is strictly between A and B. Each sample is quantized over 2 to the R possible values, because we are using R bits per sample, and this defines 2 to the R intervals over the range A to B. Each interval will be associated to a quantization value, which means that whenever the sample, say, falls into this interval here, it will be replaced by this representative value for the interval, and similarly for the other intervals. So let's look at an example for R equal to 2. The range A to B would be divided into four intervals, and these are the boundaries of each interval we would associate a representative point to each interval, and we would encode each interval using two bits. So the sequence 0, 0 would be associated to the first interval, and so on and so forth. In other words, the quantized values would be one of these four possible values, and internally the quantizer would know how to associate this binary value to this real value. The two natural questions at this point are, what are the optimal interval boundaries, i of k, and what are the optimal quantization values for each interval, hat x of k? To find an answer, let's consider the quantization error. So, this is defined as the difference between the quantized value, namely the representative value for each interval, minus the real value. We model the input as a stochastic process, as we said in the beginning, and we model the error as a white noise sequence. In other words, we assume that the samples are uncorrelated, and we assume that all error samples have the same distribution. These are rather drastic assumptions, but as a first approximation, they will give us a good feeling for the effects of a quantizer. In order to proceed further, we need a statistical description of the input samples. Let's also make some assumptions on the internal structure of the quantizer, and let's consider the simple but very common case of uniform quantization. The range, in this case, is split into 2 to the r equal intervals, with delta, which is equal to b minus a, the range of the input samples, divided by 2 to the r. 
the number of levels afforded to by a rate of r bits per cent. So in the case of r equal to 2, as before, a range would be split into four equal width intervals. The mean square quantization error is the variance of the error signal, namely the expectation of the difference between the quantized samples and the original samples. If we know the probability distribution function for the input, we can write that as the integral from A to B of the PDF of the input times the error function, which is the quantized value of the integration variable minus the integration variable squared. This is a standard application of the expectation theorem. And we can finally split the integral over the independent quantization intervals, and we get this last formulation here. Now, in order to proceed, we need to know the probability distribution function of the input to compute these integrals. So now we make a further hypothesis on the input. We assume that it is uniformly distributed. That means that the probability distribution function is just a constant from A to B of value 1 over B minus A. The mean square error becomes, therefore, the sum of 2 to the R minus 1 independent integrals, each one of which is the integral over the quantization interval of the representative value for the interval, which we haven't determined yet, minus tau square divided by b minus a. In order to find the optimal quantization points, we minimize the mean square error with respect to the quantization points themselves. We take partial derivatives of the error with respect to x hat of m, when we take partial derivatives of the sum, the partial derivative will kill all terms of the sum except the one that depends on the derivation variable. So we are left with the integral over the interval im of 2 times the quantization point minus tau divided by b minus a in the tau. We have to compute this integral over the quantization interval number m. And you remember, the range is from A to B. We divide this into 2 to the R equal intervals of size delta, and the lower and upper boundary for the interval number M will be A plus M delta and A plus M delta plus delta. In order to minimize the error, we set the partial derivatives to zero for all quantization intervals, and we find that this happens when the quantization point is the interval's midpoint. With this, we can plot the quantizer's characteristic. Here we show it for r equal to 3, 3 bits per sample. And you can see that the quantizer associates each quantization interval to its midpoint. And you have the typical staircase characteristic of a uniform quantizer. Back to the mean square error, we now replace into the expression for the mean square error the values that we found in the previous analysis, namely the boundaries for each quantization interval, the value for the midpoint, and the expression for the probability distribution of the input. And if we compute this integral, we obtain the fundamental result of uniform quantization. The mean square error for a uniform quantizer is equal to delta square over 12, where delta is b minus a divided by 2 to the r. If we analyze the error a little bit further, we can relate the expression of the error to the expression for the signal's energy. Since we assume that the input is uniformly distributed, we can compute its variance, i.e. its energy, as b minus a squared over 12. It's the variance of a uniformly distributed variable. And so we can compute the signal-to-noise ratio as the power of the signal divided by the power of the error. And the signal-to-noise ratio happens to be 2 to the 2R. So if the input is uniformly distributed and the quantizer is a uniform quantizer, which means it's matched to the input, the signal-to-noise ratio is only a function of the number of bits per sample that we allocate. We can express this result in decibels by taking 10 times the log in base 10 of 2 to the power of 2r, and we get the famous and handy formula of 6 dBs per bit. In other words, every bit we add to the internal representation of a quantized signal adds 6 dBs of signal-to-noise ratio. So for instance, a compact disk has 16 bits per sample, so the maximal signal-to-noise ratio that you can achieve in a CD is 96 dBs.
A DVD, on the other hand, has 24 bits per sample, so your signal-to-noise ratio grows to 144 dBs. So what happens if, as it's very likely to happen in real life, the input is not bounded to a known interval AB? Well, we have two choices. The first one is to clip samples. So if the sample is smaller than A, we set it to A, and if it's greater than B, we set it to B. In this case, we introduce linear distortion in the signal, and this is really the principle behind distortion boxes for guitars. So, interesting, but not necessarily what we want to hear all the time. Alternatively, we can use a saturation curve to smoothly map the input onto the desired range. This is closer to the saturation characteristic of old electronic components such as tubes that are praised by audiophiles for their lack of audible distortion. We can plot the clipping and saturation curves by taking, for instance, the interval minus 1, 1, and we can see that the clipping curve would map values outside of the range to the edge of the range, whereas the saturation curve is linear around zero and then tapers off asymptotically. If the input is not uniform, we can still use a uniform quantizer and accept an error penalty. For instance, if the input is Gaussian, it can be shown that the mean square error has this form. Um, it depends now, of course, on the variance of the input, but even for input signals with unit variance, it would be larger than dental square over 12. Alternatively, if we know the exact probability distribution function for the input, we can use the Lloyd Max algorithm to design an optimal quantizer for the input. Alternatively, a common practice in audio signal processing is the use of companders. The idea is that samples from signals such as speech or music will be generally small in amplitude with the occasional excursion into the outer reaches of the range. So, for instance, this is a mu law compander commonly used in radio, and you see that small values, say between here and here, get allocated to a wide number of quantization levels, whereas the rest of the range will share the other half. So there's a, so say, 10% of the range will get 50% of the quantization level, and the remaining 90% will get the remaining 50%. So we have more precision for the values that we know to be more probable. 